so first we need to understand what is cancer so uh, cancer is nothing but it is a uncontrolled and autonomous growth of cells in the body so it can happen in any part of the body if this happens in the kidney then we call it as kidney cancer to understand the types of kidney cancer we can divide the kidney into three basic parts one is the outer part of the kidney which consists of nephrons the inner part of the kidney which consists of the collecting system of the kidney and the third part is the mesenchyme or the stromal part of the kidney the cancers which arise from the outer part of the kidney or the nephron of the kidney which is commonly called the renal cell carcinoma it can be of uh, various types histological types the most common is the clear cell renal cell carcinoma or the ccrcc the other types includes the papillary rcc medullary rcc or the chromophobe rcc apart from this if the cancer arises from the collecting system of the kidney then it is called transitional cell carcinoma or tcc and rare group of tumors which arise from the stroma of the kidney which includes sarcoma or lymphoma so broadly we have two types of kidney cancer common types which includes either rcc or tcc and the most common primary kidney cancer is the clear cell type of rcc or cc rcc so when we are referring to kidney cancer we are referring to the rcc type of kidney cancer usually because it is the most common primary kidney cancer so the stage includes uh, stage 1 2 3 and 4 so it mostly depends on the size and the local invasion of the cancer as well as the spread to the local lymph nodes and to the other organs so if it is confined to the kidney and if it is small in size less than 7 cm then it is called stage 1 stage 2 means it is more than 7 cm and confined to the kidney stage 3 means it has invaded to the either the sinus or the collecting system or the vessels of the kidney and stage 4 includes either it has spread to other body parts that is metastatic kidney cancer or it is spread outside the covering of the kidney which is called the gerota's fascia the most important cause of kidney cancer is tobacco either smoking or chewing of tobacco increases the risk of kidney cancer occurrence by about 2 and 1/2 times than those who do not consume tobacco and this relation is dependent on the dose as well as the duration so the more amount of period we consume tobacco the higher is the risk of getting kidney cancer also with reduction in the tobacco consumption the risk of kidney cancer decreases over time the second most important risk factor is obesity with increase in the bmi uh, above normal by each point increases the relative risk of kidney cancer occurrence by 1.1 times apart from this there are some other risk factors as well which includes hypertension exposure to certain chemicals especially which contains cadmium or asbestos and exposure to certain drugs like nsaids apart from that retroperitoneal radiation and end stage renal disease also confer kidney cancer risk earlier kidney cancer used to present with symptoms because it used to be uh, presenting in the advanced stage but nowadays because of widespread use of abdominal imaging like ultrasound ct and mri scans kidney cancers are often diagnosed in the pre presentation time or pre presentation stage usually in the earlier stages of the disease so in this case patient usually do not have any symptoms and they usually get detected by the abdominal imaging a small kidney cancer or a small renal mass if kidney cancer grows it can cause symptoms especially when it grows and it in surrounds or invades the adjacent organs so usual symptoms include bleeding in urine which is hematuria pain in the area of the kidney which is flank pain and sometimes patient or the examining clinician can palpate a mass which is called the lumbar mass the presence of these three together is called the triad or the classic triad or the lethal triad 
of kidney cancer. Apart from this, patient may have symptoms which are called paraneoplastic syndromes, which can occur, uh, which are very common in uh, especially the advanced stages of kidney cancer, in which patient can have anemia, weight loss, fatigue, hypercalcemia and raised ESR. So, kidney cancer, when it is small, it is confined to the kidney. But when it becomes large or it progresses through its stages and involves the adjacent organs, it can cause complications or other effects. So, it can invade into the collecting system of the kidney and can cause bleeding in urine, which is called hematuria. And with that, there can be clots also. So, hematuria and clot retention can occur. Apart from that, it can cause severe back pain or flank pain and if it spreads to other organs, it can cause the effects of concern to that organ system. Like if it spreads to the lungs, which is a very common organ of spread, then it can cause cuff and hemoptysis. If it spreads to the bone, it can cause bone pain or fractures and it also causes uh, symptoms pertaining to other organ systems by an effect called paraneoplastic syndrome in which it can cause weakness, fatigue, anorexia, hypercalcemia, raised ESR or anemia. Kidney cancer is commonly diagnosed by abdominal imaging tests. The commonest imaging test being the ultrasound of the abdomen. An ultrasound of the abdomen can detect a vascular structure or mass lesion in any part of the kidney which is suspicious of a cancer. Further evaluation requires a cross-sectional imaging which includes CT scan or MRI of the abdomen which can detect and uh, which can characterize the kidney cancer lesion in details. Apart from this, a common test which is used is called the urine routine and microscopy which can detect blood cells. If it is a TCC, or transitional cell carcinoma arising from the kidney, then even urine cytology can detect the cancer cells in the urine. A common test which is included under the umbrella term of kidney function test includes the urine routine and microscopy. So, a urine routine can detect blood cells in the urine. This is the first sign sometimes which indicates that there may be a mass lesion or cancer arising in some part of the urinary tract or the kidney. Usually, the TCC can shed cancer cells in the urine also which can be detected by urine cytology. If the kidney cancer is advanced or is compromising the function of the kidney by obstruction, then it may present with a rise in the creatinine. But this presentation is very uncommon. The kidney cancer treatment depends on the type of kidney cancer, the grade of kidney cancer and of course the stage of the kidney cancer. Usually if the kidney cancer is localized to the kidney which is usually in stage 1, 2 and 3 then the treatment is basically surgical in which we have to remove the cancer in the kidney either the cancer itself or the whole of the kidney including the cancer. Usually for T1 mass or what we call the stage 1A disease in which the mass is less than 4 cm, only the tumor excision which is called partial nephrectomy is considered as the treatment of choice especially when the lesion is resectable surgically. In advanced form of the disease, even if the kidney tumor is localized to the kidney, radical or partial nephrectomy is considered depending on the resectability of the tumor. The resection of the kidney or the tumor can be done either in open surgery or by laparoscopic surgery or by robotic surgery. If the kidney cancer is outside the kidney, that means it is spread beyond the kidney, which is called metastatic kidney cancer, then we usually prognosticate based on a staging system, either the MSKCC or the IMDC prognostic staging system and based on that, the usual treatment is the systemic therapy in the form of immune checkpoint inhibitors or tyrosine kinase inhibitors. So, these systemic therapy agents are given. Apart from that, if the response to these treatments is good, 
Then in favorable or intermediate group of patients, we can consider debulking surgery which is called cytoreductive surgery. There is no obvious preventive strategy for kidney cancer. However, since we know that there are a uh, very common risk factors involved in the pathogenesis of kidney cancer, which includes tobacco smoking, obesity, hypertension and chronic kidney disease. So, it is very likely that if we tend to avoid these things, then we can safely or probably we can be in the right direction to prevent kidney cancer occurrence. So, I would say most important would be to stop or to decrease tobacco consumption. That is the single most important preventive strategy to decrease kidney cancer occurrence. Apart from that, control of body weight or reduction of body weight and to adequately treat hypertension should be considered as important strategies. There is no obvious diet recommended for prevention or treatment of kidney cancer. But just to extrapolate the data from the risk factors of kidney cancer, I would say that any diet which can cause hypertension or which can cause obesity should be avoided, which includes maybe salt, a reduction of salt intake in the food and a reduction of fatty food will be helpful in preventing obesity and hypertension and thus will probably help in decreasing the occurrence of kidney cancer. How fast a kidney cancer spreads depends on the size and the type of kidney cancer and also the grade of the disease. Kidney cancer is one of the very lethal cancers and especially if it is in a locally advanced form or if it is large in size, then it can grow very fast. Within a period of a few months, it can migrate from one stage to the another and it can also spread to other organs of the body. However, if the kidney cancer is low grade or very small in size, say less than 4 cm, such masses are called small renal masses, then their growth rate is actually very less. It is about 0.3 cm per year. So, these kind of lesions can be kept on follow-up, which is called active surveillance strategy and they can be serially imaged, uh, maybe after 6 months or 1 year and it can be monitored for growth in size or change in characteristics and if there is convincing growth in size or uh, it, if it has grown beyond a certain cutoff, say it has grown more than 4 centimeters or if the imaging features are concerning, then we can operate on these patients. Kidney cancer survival depends on the stage of the disease. Kidney cancer is a very lethal cancer especially in the advanced stages. But in the initial stages, the prognosis is very good and the survival rates are excellent. In T1A, that means in less than 4 cm kidney cancers, after surgery, after partial nephrectomy usually or radical nephrectomy, so after cancer ablative surgery, the survival rates are 90 to 100 percent. This I am talking about is a 5 year survival rate and as the stage progresses, the 5 year survival rate decreases. So, the rapid change in survival is especially seen when the stage of the cancer is stage 3. At stage 3 cancer, the 5 year survival rate is about 60 percent and if it spreads to regional nodes or if it is a T4 lesion, then the survival rate is about 20 percent over the 5 years and if it is metastatic, that means if the cancer has spread beyond the kidney to other organ systems, commonly the lungs, the liver and the bone, then the survival rates are very low, the 5 year survival rate being less than 10 percent. Yes, kidney cancer can spread to regional lymph nodes and to the other organs of the body. Most commonly it spreads to the lung, it can also spread to the liver, to the GI organs around the kidney and it can also spread to the bones and brain. Kidney cancer has a special tendency to spread to the vessels also. It usually spreads to the heart through the inferior vena cava. The tumor grows and reaches the atrium of the heart. Metastatic kidney cancer has a very poor survival with a 5 year survival rate of less than 10%. But uh, there may be a certain group of patients 
who may have only one or two sites of metastasis and a very small primary which may be considered resectable and if they are resected along with the primary lesion in the kidney then the survival is considered to be very good and the 5 year survival rate probably reaches up to 45 to 50 percent but usually the treatment for metastatic kidney cancer is systemic therapy so with the background of response to the systemic therapy debulking surgery or cytoreductive surgery can be done a infavorable and intermediate group of patients of metastatic um, kidney cancer patients if debulking surgery is done then it is considered that the survival is very good but still it is not at par with the earlier stage kidney cancer or the initial stage kidney cancer kidney cancer is mostly sporadic only about 5% of kidney cancer is considered to be familial or genetic. The common genetic syndromes which are associated with kidney cancer occurrence includes the VHL or the von Hippel-Lindau disease. Apart from that, it includes the Cowden syndrome, the HPRCC, the HLRCC and the tuberous sclerosis. Complex kidney cyst can be divided based on a system which is called the Bosnia classification system which depends on the CT or MRI findings of that cyst and depending on that we can stratify the risk of cancer in the cyst. So if it is a type 2 Bosniac cyst then the risk of cancer in it is about 3 to 10 percent. If it is a type 3 cyst then it is about 50 percent and if it is a type 4 cyst then the cancer risk is up to 90 percent. Kidney cancers are resistant to com conventional chemotherapy agents but the new group of drugs which is called the ICI immune checkpoint inhibitors or which also comes under the blanket term of immunotherapy are very effective in treatment of advanced kidney cancers. Also for locally advanced kidney cancers after surgery it has been approved for use for the next two years to decrease the disease specific survival or disease free survival.